Hi, it's Shell. Oh, you guys. So, my plan today was to start the um, secret journaling. Not start it, but continue that. And late last night, we had this guy call, and he's been digging on this job for hours. And he said, can you please come over, please? We really need you to, to uh, find it, find this line, because they can't find it. Uh, the people who did the locate couldn't find it and so they're wasting time so they asked us to come over so we're in Durango this morning we left about seven o'clock I think and it's about nine and I wanted to show you guys the snow hold on and I am in the car can you even see that very well I know we still have the cracked windshield because Clint is notorious there it is see the cracks uh, for putting things off he's like I'll call I'll call and now it's too cold so anyways um, yeah so this is where we are I am sitting in the car probably almost five foot look at this one how deep that is there is the ground so and that's how deep is <laughs> isn't that crazy but yeah, we're in Durango, Colorado, and uh, Clint's over here locating. He left the back of the car open, and it is cold. Let me see if I can find him. Hold on. Here we go. I don't want to make you guys too dizzy. I know. Our car is horrible because we do just use it for work. So it's filthy. There he is. Looks like an old man, doesn't he? Because he is. <laughs> But yeah, mom was not even awake when we um, got up this morning. So I had to leave her a note. <laughs> like, but I did get my exercise in. My cute honey. My cute honey bunny. Um, before we left the house. And I don't think we'll be here that long. But I just wanted to kind of catch, catch up with you guys. So yeah, so that's what's going on. They're kind of talking over there. And so I just wanted to check in with you guys. Um, it's been a depression, depressing time because, you know, Lida's sister passed. We've been dealing with all that uh, because she's like the um, beneficiary or estate, whatever. So we've been dealing with that over the phone because it's through Kansas and then her brother and sister-in-law went up and settled some things, but they're six hours away from where her sister lived. And her sister's first name has, happens to be Vivian, which is my mom's name. And my mom passed, actually January the 27th was her birthday. And she passed seven years ago. On February the 1st so this is just a really hard time for me but my mom's name of course was Vivian and you know it's just it's hitting you know hitting me this year so it, I was kind of depressed yesterday but we're doing okay it's just it's hard this time of year but yeah um, so I was gonna tell you just a little bit just cuz I can talk <laughs> so when mom passed um, I flew in on the January the 27th and she or my brother called and said you know what she's in a coma and I don't think she's still going to be alive when you get here and that night I had a dream about mom and how she was um, how she was in hospice and you know the room set up and everything and then I remember waking up and I went into the living room and laid on the couch and I fell back asleep and then when I woke up I had another dream that I was telling people that she passed away this morning well then I told my brother about it and everything and then I flew in and because uh, she's in Texas and I flew in and she said um, so, you know, I didn't know if she'd still be alive. I didn't know. I had no clue. And I walked in, and she's she's fine. She's wide awake. Ooh, hold on. She's wide awake, and 
she's like Michelle and so I ran over and gave her a hug and then for the next five days or whatever it was we planned her wedding she was getting married this is what she talked about for five days she was getting married to her first love and in that <laughs> sun horrible uh, so yeah, we planned her wedding for five days. She was getting married to her first love and she would describe the ring and she talked about the dress and all this and we ca we came to the conclusion that she was marrying Christ, you know, that it was or the, you know, Jesus or whatever and uh, Yeah, it was a very hard time, but it, it was an enjoyable time too because I got to spend that time with her and I remember that she was crying and uh, no I was crying and mom I walked in mom's room and it was just it was just emotional time you know and she said I said uh, she said Michelle why are you crying and I says oh I just kind of waved at her you know and she says I mean so giddy so happy so giddy and she's like because you're so happy for me and I'm like yeah mom that's exactly why I'm crying but it's just a hard time for me this time of year mainly because you know it's her birthday on the 27th I talked to my sister and she had a hard time too uh, this year and it really hit me like a month after mom passed because I talked to her every day at least every other day but mostly every single day and so it's really hard for me this time of year and then with Lida's sister passing and her name being Vivian and you know my my best friend passed like eight years ago we've been best friends since like 1981 and she had a brain aneurysm and so I was talking to my other friend and yeah her aunt passed of a brain aneurysm this weekend <clears throat> so it's just an emotional time and I know I just need to you know I try to stay busy this time of year sorry <laughs> But yeah, um, but it was a really sweet time spending with my mom. We had our moments for sure because on one hand, she was talking about this wonderful life that she's fixing to go live, you know, and then on the other hand, she was talking about her sister who uh, has bipolar and I mean, horrible things. So we had really high highs and really low lows with mom. Uh, just, um, you know, like mom was terrified of her sister and things like that. So it, it was a hard time. Very emotional time, but I just wanted to share that with you guys. I have no doubt that she's in heaven and she's dancing and you know, she told me, I see grandma and grandpa, her mother and father, and they were dancing. And, you know, she asked me, she said, she asked me if um, they were alive. And I said, well, mom, you know, they passed a while ago. And she says, well, I thought they did. But, you know, and she had her own TV. And uh, she could see it. It was up in the corner of her room. And... I wrote down every time she would say something I'd write it down you know out of the ordinary and she she says oh Michelle can you see that TV and she says, oh yeah I forgot you can't see it and I'd, I'd be like mom what what's going on and she says oh don't worry it's for me <laughs> so she could see this TV that no one else could see and I have some other things it's kind of still kind of freaks me out but What's really odd is she, the setup in the hospice room was identical to the setup in my dream. I mean, like where my bed was, where mom's bed was, and the chairs in the hospice room. And then when she passed, she passed at 4.30, I think it was 4.30, 3.30 or 4.30 in the morning. And I had to call people and tell them mom passed early this morning. So it was really familiar to my dream. But what was the oddest thing, and I don't know if you guys believe in spirits or not, but 
when I walked in the door, I was texting my brother, telling him, hey, I'm home and everything. All of a sudden, my TV came on. And I just froze. <laughs> and I have no idea why it came on. So for two days, we would turn it off with the remote and it would come on. Sometimes it was five to eight times a day. And the second day it happened, I said, Mom, I understand that you're okay. I love you. Can you please stop doing this because it's freaking me out? And it never happened again. I know that's really odd. It makes me look really weird. But whether it was some glitch in the TV, was it somebody from the afterlife? I have no idea. <laughs> but I felt like it was a message from her because she kept talking about the TV. And it had never done that before. And it has never done it since. So it makes no sense. But anyways... Yes, I'm probably a nut <laughs> telling you guys this, but I remember texting my brother and I'm like, oh my God, my TV just came on. <laughs> and I seriously was waiting for a message or something, but it was just a black TV, but it would turn on and it would show, you know, the thing that says like, no um, video input or whatever it is. And even when Clint was home, it did it. For two days and I was like can you please stop you're freaking me out <laughs> so anyways yeah that was like the day after I got home it was just coincidence I don't know but it makes me think it was her and you know some other things um, I feel like she's around like feathers not like dirty feathers you know or anything like that but um, she sent feathers we cleaned off our bed and put um, clean sheets on our bed and we do not have any feathers in the bedroom no feather pillows nothing like that and there was a feather on the pillow I was talking to a friend in the restaurant and there was a feather flying across just floating in the air just as we are talking about mom so I feel like she sends me feathers, you know, tons of other things. But yeah, I just wanted, I've been wanting to share that with you guys. It was really emotional and I haven't shared it ever. Though I did put it on a blog that I once had. But So yeah, I'm just sitting here rambling. <laughs> what do you guys expect of me, I tell you. Okay guys, uh, hopefully we'll be back tomorrow with... Um, more secret journaling spots so come see us tomorrow love you guys see you soon bye